Those were the days when kids were outside, running up and down the street, playing hide and go seek, freeze tag, or jump rope, getting plenty of exercise. And those were the days when the obesity rate was below 17%. That was San Quentin prisoner Horacio Hartz delivering his pitch for a startup which would help solve childhood obesity. It is part of the Last Mile program, and we were talking about that before the break. Here is Hartz again just days after his release from prison, confidently addressing a crowd at the San Francisco company Quora. Hartz's transformation is rather extraordinary. Now, a person should be defined as more than just his or her worst mistake. So we shall introduce Horatio Hartz as the father of three, a former truckloader and oil refinery worker whose goal is to send his kids to college, and he has one in college now. That said, let's make this very first question the most common question that a San Quentin uh, a prisoner got, and that is, why were you in San Quentin? I went to prison for voluntary manslaughter. Uh, I made a very bad decision that caused me to spend eight and a half years in prison. Uh, and I also, you know, had to live with the fact that I took someone's life. Um, so since being out, I've rededicated my life to, you know, giving back to society. It, it just uh, drugs and, and bad situations and... Yeah, growing up young and uh, in an underserved community, uh, single parent home, uh, just a lot of mischief, drugs, alcohol, and, you know, right. my family. Yeah. Horatio, thank you. We'll get that one out of the way. Now let's talk about... You are presented with this entrepreneur who comes into the prison and says, I want you to create, uh, of all things, you know, an iPhone app, a social <laughs> network. Uh, what did you think when the, when the idea was first presented to you? Uh, I was excited. First off, it was purely excitement. I, um, I was just focused on, I had built so much social worth inside myself. Uh, I studied for years. Uh, business books, financial books, and I was preparing for opportunity. I believed that when I got out, I was going to have to become self-employed. No one's going to hire me. So I spent all this time educating myself and just so happened six months before I leave, I'm introduced to this wonderful program that would help me develop a business plan. And, and it was just like serendipity, you know. Were you selected for it? Like, did you have to apply or what's the process? Because it's a very small handful of people that are doing this program right now, right? Yeah. Um, so you, you apply, you mm -hmm. submit application, and I had a chance to meet Beverly Parenti at the uh, first demo day. So I spoke with her and uh, she asked me to attach a note to the to the application I did and I went through an interview process and I was Why do you think you were selected? Um, I believe I was selected because I had put so much work in it and I was just determined and I think that kind of resonated with them. and um, and. Also, I was close to going home, so it was just just lined up for, for both sides. Yeah, Horatio, why did you choose child obesity, a uh, societal problem, uh, for you know your main focus? Well, I grew up in a low-income community, and I saw firsthand the high rates of obesity within my community. Also, I've always been very health conscious, so it was just like perfect for me. I rationalized this um, project of uh, Healthy Arts Institute, um, one day, early in my sentence, I was thinking, what am I going to do when I get out? And I, my initial thought was I was going to become a stock trader. I had eight and a half years to, to study stocks, and, and I said I could travel the world with a laptop and, and make money anywhere on the planet, right? And one day I was lying on my bunk, and I said, you know what? There's no real self-gratification out of that. There's no true meaning in me just making money. And so I thought and I asked myself, uh, what would I do if I was 95 years old and able to work, which field would I want to work in? And immediately it was health and fitness, so I knew that was my passion and I had to follow it. Can you give us an overview of how, um, of how you're structuring um, the project? Well, at the moment, I'm in the process of creating a Healthy Hearts Institute landing page where my supporters could uh, connect and, and receive updates and also, you know, uh, get involved. But right now, I'm more focused on learning what it takes while I'm working at Rally. To I was going to say, you, you've got a job at, at, at Rally, a, a high-tech company, an internship, right? Yes. Doing yes. what exactly? So, um, 
right now I'm doing a lot of customer support. I've worked with the uh, SEO projects. Uh, Rally's climbing on the SEO charts, right? Um, so I'm very happy to be a part of that. It's really like educational for me. It's like a first-hand, on-hand uh, MBA program. I sit in business uh, meetings with the business development team, the pro uh, product design team, uh, customer support marketing team, and I I'm re really learning what it takes to engage the end user, right, and also to uh, did you have this job startup. lined up like day one? I mean, you, you just got out of prison two months ago, right? But did you go right in, you know, straight from San Quentin to Raleigh? Uh, no. Um I had to interview, so I was ah. home for a couple of weeks, and Chris was like, well, uh, there was a couple of places that wanted to in interview me. And before I came home, I was like, hey, Chris, because Chris made a promise. He's like, if you go through the program, guaranteed to get a job, right? So I was, I got close to home, like, Chris, I'm taking you up on that offer, right? <laughs> so, uh, so so often in a business meeting or, or things, you know, uh, uh, where were you before this? Uh, that must come up. Uh, what, how, how, what's the reaction of people? Uh, you, you're essentially evangelizing this program. Because the minute you say, well, before here I was in San Quentin, people are going to say, you have got to tell me more about this program. But what's the reaction you get when somebody says, so where'd you come from? Where have you been? Yeah, um, everyone's been very receptive, man, very supportive. Uh, it's, it's shocking to me, um, but, but there is it's like been a builder for me you know although it's shocking it's like motivating me and to be able to share my story with people who uh, genuinely care about you know rehabilitation and and the changes and and actually changing public sentiment towards prison or ex-offenders or people who are returning to society someone said recently uh, uh, return citizens and mm. uh, that struck you know, it, it really resonated with me. Because that's, -con yes, or, because yeah, that's yeah. what we are. We're, we're returning but, but citizens. How, I, I'm curious to know, how rare do you think you are? Because there are a lot of inmates at San Quentin across, you know, the country, and uh, this kind of program obviously has um, huge potential, but you have to be receptive to it. I mean, you spent a lot of your eight years studying business books. Not every inmate does that, right? So what do you think is the potential for a program like this to, to scale out, you know, you, just from your experience? Oh, I, I definitely believe it's uh, highly likely that this will scale. Um, my fellow inmates, uh, prisoners, they uh, after they see the, uh, the press here, right? They're going. They're <laughs> yeah, going they to, are. They are watching. They are they watching. The television. So, so when those, they see this, yeah. they're going. It's going to resonate with them, and it's with going those to guys, them. yeah. But I think what McCall mm -hmm. is asking: out of a thousand prisoners, how many Horatio Hearts are in a thousand prisoners? In, in your in your group, uh, the Last Mile. You know, really interesting folks, but but uh, among the general prison population, you are a rarity. Or I mean, are you? I don't I, know. I don't believe so. I believe that <laughs> everyone uh, wants to do better. Um, the greatest reward for an a ex-offender is to be able to give back to society. That's the ultimate freedom, even though we may not say it. But being, having the ability, especially for me, to give back after taking so much from society, it's like that's the true freedom. And I think that given that opportunity, guys are going to just jump on it. Horatio Hartz, you are an inspiration. I want you to stay there. For our viewers who are watching television, we're going to move on to another guest. But I want to keep you here for a couple seconds. We'll, we'll go to the web on that. If you are watching television, Chevrolet is ready with its version of the electric car. Is it the Tesla for the rest of us? We'll have some tough questions for General Motors' Dave Barthmas when the press here continues.